going to speak to you very briefly about a very controversial topic, nuclear power. Our nation, and indeed the world, face three very important problems today. The first is our dependence or over-dependence on fossil fuels. The second is the pollution produced by the combustion of these fossil fuels. And the third are the greenhouse gases and global warming also associated with our overuse of these fuels. My name is George Franz, and I'm an expert in these environmental issues. I have a degree in chemical engineering from the University of Texas at Austin and nine years of environmental engineering experience serving as a consultant in air quality and pollution control for the chemical and refining industries. According to the CIA World Factbook, we consume over 20,000 barrels of crude oil every single day, two-thirds of which is imported. Now you can't read a magazine or a newspaper or watch an educational television program about these environmental issues without experts providing possible solutions. Several of these involve alternative vehicles, such as electric or hydrogen-powered vehicles. Now, these experts rightly state that these vehicles are very efficient and virtually pollution-free. However, they rarely mention the limitations of these vehicles. It requires enormous amounts of power to produce the electricity to recharge them or to produce the hydrogen to refuel them. Fossil fuels are the source of the electricity needed to perform these tasks thus moving the pollution and greenhouse gases from the tailpipe of the vehicle to the stack pipe of the power plant. Now, hydrogen for hydrogen-powered vehicles is manufactured in two ways. It can be steam stripped from existing fossil fuels, hardly reducing our dependence on them, or it can be produced through an electrical process known as electrolysis. Electrolysis separates hydrogen and oxygen in ordinary water. Now, how are we defined this electricity or energy to produce the hydrogen. Proponents provide four possible sources of renewable power, hydroelectric, geothermal, wind, and solar, each of which have their own problems. Hydroelectric power from dams is hardly sufficient to meet our needs. We would have to build more dams and those cause ecological problems themselves. Geothermal power is wholly inadequate for our needs and is available only in very specific geographical regions. Wind power would require several states be covered with wind farms or else every community have large wind farms nearby. And solar power is also inadequate for a reason that I'll currently or shortly explain. Now, Honda Motor Company produced a prototype hydrogen vehicle and a demonstration service station to refill it. The service station had 700 square feet of solar panels and after a seven days of bright sun, produced only enough hydrogen gas to fill the vehicle for a trip of 175 miles. In terms that are more easily understood, the average 2,100 square foot family home would have to be covered with solar panels completely and would generate on a daily sunny day basis enough fuel for a 75 mile one way trip. Of course, you'd have to turn around at 37 miles in order to make it home to refuel. Now, what this does is reduce our dependence on crude oil. But does it reduce our dependence on fossil fuels? Somewhat. However, the um, Department of Inf uh, Energy Information, a division of the Department of Energy in the United States, indicates that only 4% of our domestic electrical production is from crude oil. The majority of our electrical production domestically is from the combustion of coal, another fossil fuel. Now, how are we going to reduce our dependence on the fossil fuel? What do we need? What's left? Well, nuclear power. Now, many people have deep resentments or misgivings about the use of nuclear power because of accidents such as Three Mile Island or Chernobyl. In fact, people should know that an accident like Chernobyl cannot happen with a modern reactor. Chernobyl was a 1950s vintage reactor that had no containment vessel whatsoever. New technologies make it impossible for such an accident to occur. Indeed, a new technology currently in use in France and other countries, and hopefully soon in the United States, called the Pebble Bed Reactor, produces so little heat that it's impossible of melting down, even with a complete coolant failure. It's very safe. Other, pro other problems that people have mentioned, such as the storage of nuclear waste, don't present problems with modern technology. Low-level nuclear waste can, make, can be made chemically inert, and high-level nuclear waste can be reacted inside of existing nuclear reactors 
to lower its dangerous radiation content to safer levels or even be made non-radioactive with time. Nuclear energy is clean. It produces no greenhouse gases. As a matter of fact, the combustion of fossil fuels produces more radiation and other pollution than nuclear energy. The combustion of fossil fuels like coal has resulted in the release of over 70,000 tons of toxic heavy metals and radioactive products every single year and has contributed to an increase in background radiation for the entire world many times higher than all nuclear releases combined. Another factor about nuclear energy is that it's cheap. It costs less than one quarter the cost of a fossil fuel power, power plant to operate a nuclear plant. And with modern technology, that cost is only coming down. Fossil fuels are requiring more and more pollution control, driving their prices up, along with the cost of their rapidly diminishing fuel. Now, what actions can we take? The most important thing is education. Everyone should be educated on nuclear power, its benefits. You should lobby your elected representatives. Let them know how you feel. But you should educate yourself. Don't rely on things that you've heard, things that you've read on the internet. Seek out reliable sources of information. There's so much emotional opposition to nuclear power, most of it is untrue. It either never existed as a problem, or certainly doesn't exist anymore with today's modern technology. Without a large increase in nuclear power, the wonderful dreams of hydrogen vehicles and the benefits of other alternative fuel vehicles will never materialize. Um, now, don't take this to mean that the research into alternative fuels and things has been unproductive. Of course, we've increased the efficiency of vehicles, we've improved our technology a great amount because of this research. But this research has only slowed the growth in our demand for electric power. Our growth for electric power and energy for other things like vehicles will only increase, not just in our nation, but even more worldwide. We will never realize the benefits of alternative fuels or see a reduction in greenhouse gases or pollution without nuclear power. If you want to see windmills and solar farms as far as the eye can see, that's one thing. But right now, we need a clean source of power, nuclear power. We need it clean, we need it cheap, we need it renewable, we need it nuclear. Thank you.